Today I'm going to walk through the very first chapter of my book, Make Art with Python. Um, it's a book written to get beginners um, started learning programming through um, a more creative route than what you've seen traditionally. So there's going to be a lot of working with drawings and a lot of more of a creative approach to programming in general. Uh, my hope with it is that more people who see themselves as creatives first um, at least try programming um, and hopefully we get more creative people into programming in general. Um, so with that, let's get started. Um, the very first thing you're going to need to begin programming is in Python is this uh, Python interpreter. And so if you go to python.org, you'll see the Python page. And right here they have a downloads bar. And what we want is Python 3. Um, you'll see there's two different versions. We want to take the newest one, which is Python 3.6.2. And so that quickly downloads. And if I click that downloader, I get an installer. And I just th click through continue, agree, install. Install the software. And so while we wait, um, the Python interpreter is what lets us take text files that we write into an editor. We'll get to our editor in a second here. We're going to use Visual Studio Code. Um, but it lets us take those text files and turn them into actual running programs. Um, so you can either type those programs directly into the Python program, or you can let the Python program open up a text file. If that sounds confusing, we'll get into it a little bit more uh, here in a second once this finishes. So we're done with that. So next, let's install Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm going to click Download for Mac. And you'll see this is at code.visualstudio.com. Uh, if you do a search for Visual Studio Code, should be the first result, Visual Studio Code. So I've downloaded that. If I click and open it, it should have this new file, Visual Studio Code. It says that it's an application I downloaded from the internet. That's all good. Let's open it up. And so now, well, Microsoft is going to bring me back to the page and tell me how to get started. But I don't need that right now. We'll start a new file. We'll save it first. Um, so Visual Studio Code doesn't know what kind of program we're trying to write now. We need to first save our file to let it know that, um, let's save it to our documents. So we'll do first.py. And so once we add this .py to the file name we're saving, Visual Studio Code will know that it's a Python file because of that extension. So if I click Save, it says the Python extension is recommended for this file type. So I can click Show Recommendations. And this very first one, Python, has 3 million downloads. It's rated 4.5 stars. Uh, if we look at the other ones, you can see 471,000, 285,000. So let's just start with the main Python that's recommended. So if I click Install, it's going to install uh, linting, IntelliSense, auto-indenting, code formatting, all of this stuff we'll get to in a second. So let's click reload and we'll reload this window. And now if we close this, we can do import turtle turtle dot down. So this is a very, very basic first program. Um, if we save this file and when I hit command S to save it lets me know pylint is not installed so I can install pylint we'll see if this works and I get a permission denied so we'll just skip that for now I could go into detail about this but it's not really that important um, if you if you know the administrator password for your computer, you can press the up button to get the last entered command, and you can type in sudo. So if when I pressed up, this is what I got. 
it's trying to run Python pip install pilot. So if I do sudo and then I enter my password. Should now be installed. So now, if you'll remember, I saved this file to my documents directory. So if I am, if I'm in my terminal window, which by the way, this is the terminal window, and I type in pwd, you can see that I'm in my make art with Python user directory. If I change, if I type in ls, I'll see what directories there are available to me. So you can see that th my make art with Python user has applications, documents, library, music, public, pictures, desktop, done. So we saved it in the documents directory. So I press in cd, capital D, doc, because it has to match, doc, and then if I press tab, it'll automatically finish it for me. So if I do that, hit enter. I'm now in the documents directory. If I hit, if I type in pwd, you'll see again that I've gone from the user slash make art with Python directory into the documents directory. So you can see that previously we we're in this users make art directory and now we're in the documents directory. So if I type in ls, I'll see there's two files here. So I have this preview of my book that I'm working off of to follow along for the first chapter. And I have this first.py. So if we do, if we wanted to see what's in this first.py file to make sure that it's the right file, file, we can type in cat. So cat is just gonna print out whatever's in that file to our terminal. And you can see we have import turtle and then a turtle.down. And because I didn't add a new line to the end of this, you can see it just continues on right here. So if I add a new line, and I save it, and we write that again, cat first.py, and again, I just press the up arrow in order to get my previous command. You'll see that now we have this new line before it comes out. So let's try running this program now using the Python interpreter. So the Python 3 interpreter is called Python 3, easy enough. The first.py file is this file inside the current directory we're in. So I'm gonna hit enter, and you'll see, whoop, that file came up. Let's do a, um, let's do an input to stop the program from exiting immediately. So now you'll see we have this Python turtle graphics, and this is what that turtle.down does. So now if I type something into the input, my program will exit. Let's start with the terminal. Right now, again, if I do print my working directory, I'm in this users make art with Python documents directory, right? If I go back and I type in ls, I'm outside of that directory. I could also do Python 3, right? Documents slash first dot pi. So that's going to tell Python where that file is relative to the current directory. And now you'll see we still have this program again. And as I did before, all I have to do is hit enter to get this input function to finish. But if let's say that we wanted to put our entire file name path into Python, we can do that too. So let's do this. All right, here's our current directory. We can do, we can go all the way down to the most basic level, my root directory. Right, and if we do Python 3, uh, documents first.py. Now we're saying exactly where on the d disk our first.py file is. And our program still runs, and Python can still find that file. So now I can hit enter and that program will exit because again, after it does this turtle dot down, it waits for input. All right, so we've got our file. We know how to run it. Let's get back into our documents directory. You'll notice here that I did this little tilde. That's the holding the shift 
and usually the button to the left of the one um, in order to access that tilde. So if I hold down tilde, it's going to take me back to my home directory is what it's called. So if I go tildes documents, I'm back in that documents directory. So let's go up a directory. I don't know if I've shown this, but if I do cd dot dot, it's going to take me up one directory down. So I was previously in the documents and if I do print working directory, I'm now in my home directory. A little bit confusing. If I do cd dot dot again, I'm going to be in the one user one uh, directory up again. So if I do pwd, I'm now in the users directory. So let's go back and let's create a new directory. And you do that with the mkdir command uh, development. And let's create a new file again. And let's save it to users, make art with Python. And then here's our development directory. And let's save it as turtle.py. So now we're going to write our very first real program. Um, and as we did before, we're going to need to import the turtle, right? This lets us use that turtle command. And then we're going to do turtle dot down. And this is going to put that turtle right on the first uh, place that we saw before. It's going to put bring up that whole screen. So now let's do the very first snippet of code from my book. Turtle dot forward 100 turtle dot right 90 and then this code repeats so now we can do python 3 turtle dot pi and I come over here and I make sure that I've saved this file. It should be saved. Let's try running it. And what is happening? Oh, this shouldn't be named Turtle. Ah. <sighs> mv turtle.py turtle.ly.py so now that's a pretty good trick to have gotten us turtle.ly.py it should work and there we go so a couple things when we named our program which it's visual studio has closed now when we named our program turtle, Python tried to import itself, right? So this file had the same name as this import turtle file. And so it was trying to import itself. That's one of the things that is a very weird gotcha that as a beginner can really trip you up. Um, so you'll notice I just added a Y to it and now my program works. So if I tried import turtley and tried running this again, well, exit out of the previous program and I re tried running turtle again after I saved it <sighs> you'll see development is great it's gonna say name turtle is not defined <laughs> so this program now it draws a square. Perfect, right? Um, so, so far we've seen all of our editing happen inside of the, um, the terminal window inside of Visual Studio Code. There's another terminal window you can access by typing in 
Command Space first. If I hold down Command and press Space, the Spotlight search comes up. So if I type in Terminal and I type in PWD, I get the exact same thing. So if I go into my Development folder and I do LS and I type in Python 3 turtly.py, and again, I'm just pressing T-U-R-T and then pressing Tab, and it automatically completes it for me. And I run it, I'm going to get the same thing. My program runs perfectly. I can also type in Python 3 and do import turtle and then do a turtle.down and get the same thing. So if I'm here, I can do the exact same program I did before, right? So I do turtle.forward100, turtle.write90, turtle.forward100, and so on. Actually, if I press up, I can get the previous command and finish the entire program. So here, I just type in exit, and I can exit. So that is called the Python interpreter. That's where you can just type in programs directly. There's a few tricky gotchas there that we'll get into later on in the book. But for now, I think that's a very good first um, run through. Uh, we opened up the editor, we wrote our first program, we had it execute. So, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any problems.